Joining us now here on your home of the Rangers is the man holding it down at first base, hitting a clean 357 with a three ribbies in the bomb ski and 14 plate appearances so far. OPS 1,000. It's uh, Jared Walsh here with you on 105.3 The Fan. And a good afternoon, sir. How the heck are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're doing we're doing awesome, man. Congrats on on the start and and, uh, and the success you're having there. How how are you getting settled in? You enjoying this? I'm loving it, honestly. Uh, it's early, but one of the best baseball experiences I've ever had. So very happy to be here and uh, enjoying every day. And I hear you're sleeping good again. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I am sleeping pretty good. That's a uh, I'm getting like eight or nine hours now. So that's exciting. That wasn't happening for a while. So when did you get clear of that? And, and and tell our audience that might not be familiar a little bit of your journey through it. Yeah, just, um, you know, towards the end of the 2021 season, I started dealing with some neurological issues, kind of affected my sleep, my recovery, vision, headaches, the whole nine yards wasn't really too much fun. So, um, you know, battled that the last few years. And then it seemed like kind of towards the end of last season and into this off season. I started to feel a little bit more like myself. So, um, you know, I think it's just keep that good momentum rolling and see how this season shakes out. Man, that's got to be incredibly exciting for you that, you you know, you can resume what was, you know, just a brilliant 2021 season uh, up until there at the end, right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, and I think, you know, hitting in a lineup like this makes it a lot easier because there's so many studs that, uh, you know, it's kind of a pass the baton mentality. If Corey doesn't do it, then Marcus will and, Adolis and obviously, you know, Josh is out, but he had a great night last night. So there's just so many guys in this lineup that pick up the slack that it's fun to add a little depth. How has that relationship with Tim Hires been for you to to rejoin him with the Rangers, but also now help get to you back that all star form where you were as a hitter in twenty twenty one? Yeah, the entire hitting staff here is just unbelievable. Uh and that was I knew that going into it and uh, you know, I hope to work with hitters after my playing career is done as well. So being able to learn from these guys, both uh, for my own swing, but other people's swings was something that was really appealing to me. So I think when they reached out, it got me really excited. And my agent and I kind of felt like this was a good spot for me. Has there been anything different or has it been just what you imagine? Like outside looking in, you see they're the champions, you know, Bochi, Chris Young, all the guys on this team, but has it been exactly what you sort of imagined it was going to be? Uh, yeah, I think just when you play in the division against teams, you kind of get a feel for uh, what you at least think the clubhouse is like, what the guys are like. And, you know, I've been in this division since 2019. And then guys like Seager, you know, when I'm with the Angels, he's with the Dodgers, you play against them a good bit as well. So I felt like I kind of had a good feel and it's been exactly what I had hoped it would be. So, um, yeah, they've welcome me with open arms it's been a blast brand new texas ranger jared walsh with us here in the nation have you been granted any sort of uh, ox cord uh privileges in the clubhouse you get to throw on your playlist yet i leave that to my guy nathaniel Lowe. he does an (laughs) outstanding job on all the flights but we have pretty similar tastes in music so i'm not going to complain about anything he puts on okay i didn't know if you were filling in for him on the diamond like you get to also (laughs) fill in for him on the ox cord no no he's great at his job Hey, Jared, you played uh, baseball in Cape Cod in, in the summertime? I did. Did Did you enjoy that experience? Because we talk about there's a lot of players that go up there and all that, and you, you live with families and stuff like that. It, it, how does that uh, How does that all transpire? Yeah. Um, so when I was at the University of Georgia, I went up after my sophomore year to Cape Cod. Um, I lived with the Casey family in yeah. – uh, I believe it was Sandwich where they live, Katuit area, Massachusetts, and played a summer. It was great. Uh, I got to see parts of the Northeast that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. So, yeah, I mean, definitely played against a lot of big leaguers when I was there uh, or guys that ended up playing in the big league. So um, I think it's I think it's probably the best uh, summer collegiate baseball league there is. Were you bummed when Georgia got left out of the college football playoff? I was bummed, but you know how it goes. If you're going to lose, you got to lose early yeah. because once you pick up that momentum at the end of the year like Alabama did, that's really more important than going undefeated and losing when everybody's eyes are on you. Are you a big you a big college football guy then? I am. Yeah, I am a big college football guy. Um, I watch a little bit of NFL. I'm a huge Steeler fan as well. So okay. uh, it's been, you know, 
the Steelers have been a little rough, but Georgia winning back-to-back national championships, I don't really have too much room to complain. <laughs> no, sir. No, it's, it's been a good ride for us as well here, uh, uh, Jared. Now, from my understanding, you, you kind of grew up in Wisconsin, and then Georgia, how the Steelers come into play for you? Yeah, both of my parents are actually from Pittsburgh. So oh. when I was a kid, uh, we had season tickets. We lived in right outside of Atlanta, but eight times a year, we were flying to Pittsburgh to wow. go to every home game for the Steelers, and then I was fortunate enough to go to Super Bowl Forty. So I, I was a spoiled brat when I was a kid. I got to watch sporting events people would kill to go to, so I'm very thankful. And, you know, my family and I really cherish those moments. Did, was there a jersey? Because everybody, when you go to a Pittsburgh game, everybody's got a jersey on. Did you have a jersey as a kid that you were always wearing, uh, supporting when you, were, when you were going to those games? I had a, when I was really young, it was a Plexico Burris jersey, yeah. blast from the past, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> Literally. Moved, on, moved on to Heinz Ward. He was, he was one of my favorites. It was always a know, Georgia guy, blocker. right? Yeah, reliable, yeah. great hands. Yeah, Georgia, great Georgia smile. alum, so he was, he was my guy. Now, at six foot two ten, I got to imagine the football coaches were trying to get a young Jared Walsh on that field. Well, I, yeah, that's... That's the thing. I played defensive end when I was younger. I've never hit anybody hard in my entire life. I was <laughs> an arm tackle, and you got right by me. But I could throw the football a little bit, so they would try to get me to go out for the football team. But I was playing baseball every day in at East Cobb um, in the summers, and I was always kind of a baseball guy. Football, my mom had to drag me to football practice. I'd fake sick and do whatever I could to not go to practice. And baseball, I was running out the door, so... I think that's why I'm still playing. So, were you a like a, a Pirates fan or a Braves fan or or Brewers? How how did you have an elite a strong allegiance as a kid? Uh, so my, my parents are from Pittsburgh, so we did watch the Pirates. But I'm sure, as you guys know, the early 2000s were not the Pirates' no. heyday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in my childhood, my parents bought me these. I think they're HBO documentaries, like when it was a game, uh, baseball, old school baseball documentaries. And it was pretty much just like Yankees propaganda. So I, I'm like, hey, guys, I'm a Yankee fan now. And they're like, what are you talking about? You can't be a Yankee fan. Uh, and so, yeah, that that wasn't a good thing for them. But I grew up, I loved the Yankees. So um, that was my team when I was younger. What's it like for you as you've gotten some experience pitching out of the bullpen? I always think it's interesting when we get some of the, uh, you know, your infielders or an outfielder goes out there and you got to pitch late in the game. What do you have in your arsenal there? Yeah, I wanted to kind of compete. I was a, a pitcher in college, so when I would get on the mound, I was trying, which, you know, guys, like, they'd see me and they were assumed I was going to throw it like 78, and I'm like, no, I'm going to, like, treat it like a real at bat. So um, for me, it was just uh, consistently trying to throw strikes because when you're down 15 to nothing, nobody yeah. wants to see somebody walk in the house. So it was get the fastball over the plate and let the defense work a little bit. How long uh, into your career were you thinking – you know, pitching was still an option. Well, I pitched in the major leagues in 2019. So, um, and then until you got hurt, you were you going to be like an Otani, like an American Otani? Uh, I think it was. Kind of, I think it kind of depended on what my role was going to be. If I was a first baseman playing 150 games, I doubt they'd want me pitching too much. But you know, in 2019, I probably got 10 to 12 extra days of service time as being a mop up guy when we were. Yeah up by a lot or down by a lot. So, you know, I think that had I not gotten injured, that could have been something, maybe take a little heat off the bullpen, but I guess we'll never know. Is that part of why Boach likes having you? Can you, can you still give us some innings if uh, if we have the need around here? Maybe. He hasn't mentioned anything. Maybe Mad Dog might have me throwing a bullpen out there pretty soon. <laughs> that would be a it's, – it's always fun to see a position player get in there. Can you feel the yeah. excitement? Yeah. Okay, uh, Jared Walsh here with you on the fan. Is it weird uh, coming onto a new team when they're all getting rings and, and you're sitting there like, man, I want one too, guys? Oh, I, I mean, I guess I would just say it was a little inspiring. You know, yeah. you watch the video yeah. and you see all the clutch moments from the postseason. It just gets you really excited. Um, you know, they, like I said, team full of stars, guys who have been there and done that. They got the slowest heartbeats when the game's on the line. So, I think it was more inspiring. Obviously, I'm jealous. Um, you know, my dream is to play in the playoffs, eventually win a World Series. But I feel like I came to a good place to do that. 
Yeah, you certainly did. Hopefully we can run it back here. I like the, uh, I guess we'll never know, line that you dropped as well. That certainly <laughs> resonates nice. here with Ranger fans and Corey Seager. What about the cards in the clubhouse? After the Rangers won the World Series, everyone's talking about the cards. Have you, have you gotten to mix it up at all? Well, in terms of like playing the cards. Playing game, the cards, yeah. No, I leave that to Jacob DeGrom, Josh Smith, Travis Jankowski, and Corey Seager. I made the joke. I'm like, I'm convinced I could come in here on Christmas Eve at midnight and those four would be sitting around a table playing a game of pluck. So it's uh no, I leave it to them. So are you crossword puzzle guy? Are you ping pong guy? Okay. Yeah. Crossword puzzle, crossword puzzle and just talking. I would assume I talk more than most of the other guys. In the, Dude, the, the intensity just at spring training going in the clubhouse, the intensity in which every player in that clubhouse attacks those crossword puzzles yeah. is, is amazing. But you think you're probably yeah, the best. No, gosh, no. I've seen Josh Spores just annihilate one in about five minutes. So I just kind of picked the crosswords back up. But we got guys that are much sharper than me working on those. Do, do you guys have the same one that you're competing uh, against each other on? Or is it just yeah. Every, yeah? Yeah, it's the USA Today. That's pretty much a staple in every big league clubhouse as far as I know. Jared Walsh with us here in the G-Bag Nation. So it's National uh, Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, Jared. One, I mean, I wonder where that ranks on your sandwich hierarchy, but what do you think is the best flavor combo for food? Well, I interesting fact, I nor any of my siblings have ever eaten a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Not one. What? Of course, because oh, you were flying to Pittsburgh every week what to watch games. Is it a peanut <laughs> allergy? No, no, it was peanut so, butter and honey, oh. peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. Okay. Yeah, it's it was good. Okay. Never peanut butter yeah. and jelly. I mean, I've eaten probably thousands of peanut butter sandwiches. It's just that combo just never really resonated with any of us. Respect the fluff, though, dude. The, the, the peanut yeah. butter and fluff sandwiches, really, really fantastic. Yeah, very good. And you throw a little honey on there, you get that humongous blood sugar spike, but it tastes Ooh. delicious. I <laughs> yeah. mean, that's a good sandwich. Is that a, is that a, like a, is that a pregame meal for you? Do you have like a, a no. game day routine eating-wise? Yeah. That's like late night. I don't have a ton of food at the house, so that's what I'm going to make. With all the Pittsburgh runs, do you do you respect the Pitts burger that they seem to always talk about and love, the Permanti-style burger with the fries on it and everything? Yeah, we were a big Permanti Bros family. We we There's one in the Strip District not too far from the stadium that we used to go to a lot. Okay. Now, uh, how, how much eating are you doing on a game day, like before – before the game, not after, but before. Oh, man. I try to just go – I don't really know portion size. It's more so just cleaner. You don't want to be running around with a stomach full of donuts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, we broadcast like that every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if I weren't out there tracking down baseballs, I would be. But, you know, I'm like, I don't need that sloshing around. <laughs> Okay, so you do you do a lot of the talking. I uh, you said who who do you believe to be the funniest guy on in the clubhouse thus far? Oh, that's tough. I don't know. I think Nathaniel Lowe, and once he and I start going, it's it's pretty funny. We have very similar sense of humor. So, you know, and we're from roughly the same area too. We know a lot of the same people. So once we start okay. going, we're cracking up. Who's more impressive to watch in the weight room, uh, Adolis or Wyatt Langford? Oh, well, that's what I said. Wyatt weighed in, and he's 20 pounds heavier than me. I'm like, it upsets me that he's 20 or, twenty pounds heavier than me, and he's that much faster than I am. Like, I, I think the speed surprised all of us, dude. He's, like, he's, a, he's a brig bleep house, and you can see it from a mile away, but then the speed, and you're like, holy crap, dude, what can he not do? Yeah, he's, I mean, you guys have, he's a treat. You, you're going to enjoy watching him play for a very long time, hopefully only in a Rangers uniform. Hopefully. Yes, amen to that. All right, before we let you out of here, I do want to, uh, I have some analysis from Jared Sandler, uh, the second best Jared in the Rangers organization, and uh, he is describing one of your teammates. Can you can you guess your Rangers teammate? You know, what he's got working there between the knee and the waist is pretty impressive. That that's it. That was that's it. it. That's all you got there. It's a small hint or a big one. Do you want to hear it again? Kisner. Kisner. Yeah. Andrew Kisner. Okay, it, what what makes you guess Kisner? He's he's got a catcher's lower body. Yeah. Oh, that that's good. It's a hell of an oh, answer. Think it's a ball oatmeal. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Good yeah. It's a it's a damn good guess by you, Jared. I'm sorry to inform you that you are incorrect on that, but it was a really really good call. If we get you back here this year, we'll play we'll play this game with you again, and then we'll re we'll do the big reveal. We'll also get you a PB and J. 
All right, I'm in on that. Unfortunately, I have to go as well because I got a meeting in two minutes that Cheers, I'm not buddy. trying to be late. You to go crush it. You freaking Love killed you. it. You're, You're the great man. talking. All right. There he goes. Thank you, guys.